Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Pokemon Omega Ruby. I'm here with the Pokegamer in the last episode. We kind of um, caught Heatran. There was a little bit of a complication with like the whole um, resetting your internal clock for your DS and stuff and it's fixed now. Um, of course, I'm going to have to rearrange it again this weekend. I will remember to obviously get on and make sure that it, you know, does its thing before and um, so what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be heading back to where we originally had intended to go, which was the Trackless Forest. Um, we will be catching both Raikou and Entei today. Um, to get Raikou, you need to be here at around, um, okay, basically you need to be here on the hour. So like right now, as I'm doing this, it's actually 7 p.m. for me. Um, you would need to do it anywhere between now and 20 minutes after, so between 7 and 7.20. Uh, if you want to get Entei, you need to get Entei between 20 minutes after the hour, so 7.20, and um, 40 minutes after the hour, so 7.20 to 7.40. And then, of course, I'm sure if you are, you've already guessed, you can get Suicune in the remaining 20 minutes of the hour. So, it's kind of like an every 20 minute thing, you can find them. Um, so, the strategy here against um, all three of them, actually, believe it or not, is going to involve Gardevoir. Um, which is actually kind of risky because of this. I can trace their pressure, which causes them to lose PP a lot faster. And Raikou, believe it or not, is the trick. You're one of the three. This is because you can't paralyze it, and I don't have something like Hypnosis on my team. So, I mean, there's that. Now, during damage calcs, I was wondering if it was going to be similar to Entei's damage calcs, where I would need to use Dazzling Gleam a couple times. But apparently, according to the damage calcs, that one Psychic would actually be enough to bring it down to the red. It's obviously a guaranteed to hit kill. Um, I was kind of skeptical about using it, but it actually turned out to work really nicely. The thing is, it's even riskier against Entei, and you'll see why here in a bit. Um, because its damage output on Entei is actually greater. I don't know, maybe Raikou's just more especially defensive than Entei. I'm not entirely sure. I don't know base stats off the top of my head, but I mean, there's that. So, obviously, again, the idea here was to just use Psychic to bring it down into the red. Unfortunately, we're not able to put a status affliction on it because burn would kill it, poison would kill it, we don't have sleep, can't paralyze it because it's an electric type, and, you know, just kind of throwing it out there. I mean, I guess you could freeze it, but I mean, that requires damage usually. I mean, unless well, suddenly they somehow released a move that just says, oh, this Pokemon's frozen. In which case, that move would probably be banned from every sanctioned Pokemon video game event ever. Because it just seems like it would be severely overpowered. So, yeah. I kind of want to talk about this really quick. Um, actually, I'm going to probably hold off on that because we're almost done, I think, with this. And I don't want to kind of just drag on about it and then, you know, have to, you know, stop and then be back and then continue from it. Because what we're going to do is we're going to catch Raikou and then we're going to wait for the next interval of 20 minutes where Entei will appear. So it's just a matter of catching Raikou and um, dealing with it. I mean, it's about all there is to, you know, doing this. So, I mean, the only one I haven't tested yet is Suicune. I haven't tested that, that damage off screen yet. I'm going to probably do that here in a bit after I'm done actually uploading this video. So that way I can get a good idea as to what moves I can probably use. I, I'm kind of afraid to see what Suicune is really going to be like, but... Because according to the damage calcs, I should be using Shadow Ball. Apparently Psychic and Dazzling Gleam both do way too much damage to it, so... I don't know. I, it's just how things are, I guess. But... If it... Er, yeah, I almost called this thing Entei. If Raikou would get in the goddamn ball... Because, I mean... It's great when it just keeps breaking out. So, I mean... And, yep. Of course, breaking out. Again. Because why not? Cool thing is, um, I can finally start catching up on anime again. That's something I'm actually very happy about. Um, as for the reason why, I'm going to cover that probably in the immediate part of the next episode. Or not next episode, but the next half of this episode. Um, when, again, when this thing actually gets caught, because that way I'm not kind of taking up too much time between catching the next legendary and stuff. I'm going to try and do that with a lot of the ones that there are multiples of. For example, would be... Um, well, I can't really do that with the Musketeer Trio, because, I mean, they're daily, not timed. But, and I need to kind of check at some point whether or not Cresselia is around, because 
Again, Cresselia is a RNG luck based thing, so I mean, I don't know. It's weird. I, I'm, I'm surprised I managed to actually get it to appear on my Alpha Sapphire. And, um, yeah, I, I don't know. It's something that I need to work on getting to appear, though, because it's a legendary that you don't need any real requirements to get. So it's something that we are going to eventually get in this game. It's just whether or not we can actually get it to appear. Which, if it doesn't, by the time we get around to the, like, it's basically going to be the last legendary. If we don't seem to, like, run into it at all before we, like, get down to it being literally the last, um, yeah. Like, if it's not, if I find it before we find the last one, then I'll obviously t deal with it then and there. But, yeah. Anyways, now that we've caught Raikou, we can obviously get ready to get started on the next legendary, which is, of course, going to be Entei. So, I mean, after a very wonderful Pokédex entry of a very gorgeous Pokémon, I really do like Raikou. Um, we can get started on Entei, so I'll be back in a moment and we can get started on Entei. And we're back. So now we get to start on Entei, and of course, um, strategy as I mentioned before is kind of going to be using Gardevoir. Um, Gardevoir here has two options. She can use two Dazzling Gleams due to Fire Resisting Fairy. Or she can risk it and go for the Psychic, which does around, at most, 99% damage. So, believe it or not, we're going to actually be risking this and actually going for the Psychic. Um, I didn't have time to actually test Psychic before I could actually record. Um, well, I, kinda, I guess I kind of did, but I, I didn't want to kind of put this off very much. But, as you can see, yeah, that damage was absolutely ridiculous. It's obviously different from Raikou. And um, as a result, it just barely survives. I kind of derped here and ended up throwing a Dusk Ball, kind of jumping the gun when I should have actually used Thunder Wave to kind of prevent it from using any further, um, you know. But um, yeah, like we just don't want it to run out of PP because that, that would be very, very bad. And at least with Thunder Wave, we can sit here and watch it, you know, potentially be fully paralyzed and yeah. So, I don't really care about Gardevoir feigning, we can e either A, revive it, or B, go to the Pokemon Center off screen before we start the next episode, and, um, you know, so it's not a big deal. Um, so a Swampert can obviously resist uh, fire pretty pretty easily. Um, outside of that, it has Stomp. I believe it has Fire Fang, Flamethrower, Stomp, and Swagger. So, uh, it's just there to kind of resist the uh, fire moves, just because that way it just makes things a little bit easier. Um, of course you still have to deal with the potential burns, which is always always a problem. And it's not like we ever have to attack anymore, so Swagger's not really a problem for us anymore. So, it kind of just comes down to taking damage and potential like residual damage from burn. So, I mean, there's that. So, like I kind of mentioned um, in the first half, uh, I get to finally start doing things on um, like catching up on anime and the reason for this is because I finally obtained the Reaper title that I had been talking about here and there through my commentary over the last few weeks in you know all of my Let's Play videos. Um, I did in fact upload the final dungeon run that I had to do in order to obtain said title. 810 runs in total to unlock it you need 10 um, you need to do 10 runs just to reveal the title, um, and then you need to do 800 after you revealed it in order to unlock it. And I managed to do the or the 800th run to unlock it as of yesterday, so I can finally start doing a lot of other things. Um, of course, I'm not exactly like done with L Sword, of course, but yeah. Also, I kind of want to mention this: if people actually do enjoy seeing videos like that one, and if you haven't watched it already, go and check it out. And tell me what you think if you guys want to see me do more of that whether it be with parties or solo um i might not mind doing that if people actually are interested so i'm just kind of throwing that out there for anyone that might actually be interested in me doing that you know just kind of leave feedback on it um there will be a new area introduced into the game in the next month or two so i can easily kind of record playing through the new dungeons for people that uh otherwise kind of, you know, want to actually somewhat understand what's going on, I guess, because the Korean one, you obviously can't read the descriptions or anything like that, you can't read some of the flavor text from the characters or something, I don't know, but if you guys would like me to do that, then that's fine. Um, I used to have 
uh, people that I that I knew personally on Skype and stuff that would actually play the game as well. But they kind of haven't played in a very long time. If they still played, I would actually consider playing with them and kind of recording it for you guys. But I don't know. It it doesn't seem like that's very likely. So and I don't really have people that I know in the game on Skype to kind of do this with as well. So it's just you know. But um, yeah. So if you guys are interested in seeing more of that, by all means, let me know. And as for Entei, it really needs to get in the goddamn ball. It, it really does. We, we obviously don't want to sit here and be burned to death, because, you know, burns are absolutely fantastic. I don't even, I wasn't paying too close attention to the status thing there. I don't, I, I guess that would be in the other thing, wouldn't it? I'm trying to think. I, it might not be, because I think we went to the HP thing, but I, I'm not entirely sure if we have burn heals or not. It would be kind of hilarious if we did, though. But, not that I would ever use one when I'm in the red. That seems kind of counterproductive, I guess. You just waste a turn and just get smacked in the face or something that could potentially kill you, like a flamethrower. Despite the resistance, even though it doesn't do very much. I guess flamethrower wouldn't kill. Maybe fire thing would. Assuming its physical attack's better, because it seems to be doing better damage with things like fire thing and stomp. But, I mean... And hooray, it breaks out again, because that's what everyone enjoys watching, right? Is Let's Players trying to catch legendary Pokemon and just watching them continuously break out of Pokeballs over and over and over again. All I know is Entei's is kind of a pain in the ass. Similar to... Okay, not not on the same level, but very similar to Registeel. It, well, it just kept... I think there was, I don't remember if it was Raikou or if it was actually Entei. One of the two, I kept getting no shakes whatsoever. I would throw a ball, no shake, throw a ball, no shake, throw a ball, no shake. It happened like five times in a row, which was absolutely ridiculous, by the way, because the odds of that ever really lining up like that are very unlikely, unless it's like a Pokeball on like a level 100 full health legendary that's probably going to sweep your entire team. So, yeah, it just... It's not very likely for something like that to just line up, but I don't know. It's just, you know, how things are, I guess. But I need to start getting work, or, or I need to start working on a, uh, or editing this overlay. I'm going to basically use a similar overlay from now on, um, but I'm going to use, um, I need to change it up for the next Let's Play, because I'm going to probably be getting started on that sometime in the next month, maybe? I want to say in the next month, because we have the Legendary Dogs, we have um, Cresselia, and I think we might have a couple others that we can get. I think we can get, yeah, we can get the Genies, or at least one of them. I think we can only get one. Um, but yeah, there's that. And then I think there's one other that we can get. I'm not entirely sure. I have to look through the legendary list again and see what we can get. But once we do that, we're going to just be taking on the Elite Four for the final time, and then we will be putting the final nail in this coffin of a Let's Play. Because, you know, and we put the final nail in Entei's coffin, that's for sure. So, congratulations, we've caught two of the legendary dogs. We now need to work on getting the third, which the third, as I mentioned before, you can obtain in the remaining 20 minutes of the hour. So, yeah. Which, it should be almost like that in my DS right now, and I can probably start trying to work with Suicune here in a few minutes. But, as I was mentioning about Suicune, that's what we're going to be doing in the next episode. We're going to be working towards catching that. And, um, yeah, so be sure or be sure to stay tuned for that. If you haven't already, don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, this is the Pokegamer, signing out.